Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my new Codex workflow that I've learned this week. And in my opinion, this new workflow that I'm going to be showing you today is far better than the old cursor workflow that I've been using up to this point. So as you guys can see on my screen here, I have several different agents running right now in different terminals. And um, here's my API running, here's my UI running, um, here's the view creator website here. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six Codex agents at my disposal and I've been using them. I actually started to stream this morning um, at 5 a.m. and I've been streaming for the past about an hour and a half, but I wanted to stop the stream so that I could make this video and actually show you guys and teach you guys how to integrate the new Codex, um, specifically Codex GPT-5 High into your workflow. So something to note is that with the new Codex workflow, um, essentially, it's different than your old cursor workflow because Codex agents run for much longer than typical cursor agents. So I'm just gonna show you guys right now my usage real quick. So I have the um, the Pro, ChatGPT Pro plan and in the past several days, I've racked up $42 worth of costs on Codex. But what's nice is that I've only been using it for a couple days and I have the pro plan, so I essentially have unlimited usage. And what I'm hoping to do is I'm hoping to spend about $1,000 this month for the $200 plan to make it financially uh, feasible. But I'm using the ChatGPT pro plan so that I don't run into any usage limits. And I'm just gonna walk you guys through um, some of the things that I've learned the past couple days and then how this workflow actually works. So let's get started. And I just wanna draw your attention down here. So in this, in this uh, chat, this agent down here, what I had to do is I'm trying to update this uh, agents page so if I show you guys agents here, you can see that right now it doesn't integrate light mode and dark mode. And then also this uh, little animation, this uh, robot animation that I have, it's kind of like pinned and it's in a container. So it's cool, but not quite the way that I want it. So essentially what I did is I shared it, I gave it a prompt, and then I had it generate a plan. And then I also have the Playwright MCP hooked up to Codex so that it can actually verify that its updates integrated the way that they were supposed to. So it said, once you're good with this approach, I can work through the impl implementation. So I'm gonna now say, great work. Uh, now implement updates. And what's interesting is that Codex is different from Cursor in that it takes a lot longer for agents to run, but they're actually much more accurate. So I expect this to run for about the next 10 minutes. The goal is for this video to end around 30 minutes. So I'm gonna keep an eye on the clock. Right now it's 7.02. I'm gonna stop this video at 7.30 so that doesn't get too long, but I'm just gonna go through my workflow for the next 30 minutes and really try and describe to you guys what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So let's go back over to the homepage here. And here I was working with this hero. Um, as you guys can see, I have um, this really cool animation. And to get that animation, I actually am using the 21st century dev. I don't have an affiliation with them, but I've been using this library. And what's cool about this is for example, you know, I liked this uh, this cool robot looking thing here, right? So what I did is all you have to do is click copy prompt and then it's able to generate the UI based off the prompt. So it's essentially replica, uh, replicatable uh, UI. So here's another one um, that's kind of cool is like this splash cursor effect, which I think is pretty cool. It's very unique. Um, we could integrate that. Um, let's go here and back these black background lights are cool. So we have a couple of pages on the website that we could update. Um, also something to note is that we're also updating um, this agent's working on patching some errors that we have right now in our dashboard because we made a refactoring here for our API and now we have to integrate some of the front end updates that are currently failing. So for tools, I have this, uh, with tools with View Creator, we have different tools like uh, YouTube thumbnail generator, YouTube title generator. And I actually wanna update this component. I really like the splash, the splash screen effect, that's cool. Uh, but maybe we could add these background lights for tools just because, um, you know, it's a cool background. So all I have to do is click copy prompt and uh, we'll just see how this looks. But um, here you can see that we're in the View Creator UI. So I'm gonna now paste this prompt in. So it's a 5,624 character prompt. And then I'm gonna say, uh, review the tools page in the UI and update the background of the hero section to use the background lights provided and outlined in the pasted content. Uh, think through how light mode and dark mode 
can be implemented properly. Do not change the content, for example, the header or the slideshow. I only want the background of the hero component on the tools page to be updated to use these background lights. So essentially I wanted to create a more uh, engaging splash screen. And I think that using these background lights is pretty cool. So we're gonna try and integrate the background lights. So this agent's now working on that. Let's check out now the dashboard and see if we have that working again. Looks like this is still failing. So let's pass this in um, and ask, hey, why, why is this failing? Pass in all of this, uh, all of this information here. 7,000 characters. Why am I getting this error? Oh, you guys can't see my prompt right now. Hold on, let me move this forward a little bit. Why am I getting this error on this page? So a couple things I referenced is I'm gonna reference the page, I'm gonna reference the errors on the front end and the back end, and we're gonna try and debug this error. Um, for now though, a couple things that we're gonna continue to have to update, but there we're working on this error in the back end. Um, and then here we're working on the, the, uh, the tools background. And then in this here, it looks like it uh, it's asking, hey, you know, to, to accept, I'm gonna say all. So now this is gonna be updating. So it did update a little bit, but not quite the what, what we need to do. So hopefully when it runs the Playwright uh, MCP, it'll able, be able to notice it. I just don't like the robot being in, in the container. Like in my opinion, the robot should be essentially like full screen width or screen height, not screen height, but component height. So instead of it being in this div where it's like in a container, um, it really should be in the uh, component as a whole. That would be really cool. Um, so we'll, we'll try and integrate that. Let's check out how it looks on, uh, on, on light mode. You know, it's not done updating yet, but let's just see what it looks like. Let's go to agents. So that does now integrate light mode and dark mode, which it didn't before. So it did succeed with that, but right now the robot's still in that div, which I don't like. So we'll keep working on that. And something that I always try and do is just to stay active running multiple things at once and just try and stay organized in your mind, like, hey, which agent is working on what? Um, so this still is in that container and I really don't like that. So I'm gonna screenshot this and I'm gonna just tell it the robot, or let's go here. The robot animation is still in this container. I don't like that. I want, it to actually not have a container and for example actually be on the hero component itself uh, think deeply and make your updates so I don't I don't like this container that's outlining the robot and the robot you know we could take it or leave it I just think it's cool it's a cool challenge um, so let's see how that works. The tools is still updating. Looks like this over here has been updated. So let's see if we still get that errors and we, do we? Let's refresh. Looks like we still do. Um, so until the backend is adjusted, the, okay, you got two up with the API to match the new contract for each controller, accept the session identity, make user ID optional. Examples, credits, controller, add, a credits balance handler that uses S, um, not by sending the user ID in the request. So essentially what's going on here is that on the front end, the user ID previously was being sent through uh, the front end, which is, you know, through the client, which is actually not good. You should not be sending a user ID through the client because for example, if you do that, what it does is it allows people to, let's say I knew how to use the client to alter the JavaScript, right? Well, what I could do is I could make it so that I use somebody else's user ID to get some of their information. So what you have to do is to make sure that that doesn't happen is you have to actually decode the JWT and grab the user ID out of the JWT token in their request instead of uh, grabbing it from the front end. So that's an update that we're making now. That's why we're getting this error. But I think that in a couple minutes, we'll be able to solve that hopefully before uh, 7.30. Um, but one thing about Codex that is so different is that it 
it takes a long time to run its commands. So here you can see um, what we were doing here with that tools page, it's still going you know, to integrate those background lights. And the background lights have not been implemented yet, but this has been running for the past four minutes and 38 seconds. So we will see here in a second how that ends up looking. So something that we need to do is let's take a look at, uh, looks like we have updates coming in now here. Let's let them, let it, let it do its thing. That's on the tools index page. So once these get updated, adding Aurora background import, so this will this should go away here in a second once that's updated. Let's pause our UI for a second. Um, this agent over here is in our API working on the credits controller, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want it to do. This one's drafting a new hero section patch. Uh, its plan says I'm planning to restructure the hero section by positioning the spline scene as an absolute background without a frame. That's perfect. It's exactly what we wanted. So something that's important when you're working with codex is to just understand what where the agents are in the code base and to make sure that you don't have agents that are going to be working on top of each other. Um, that's one thing that I get asked a lot on stream is, hey, how do you make it so that agent aren't working on top of each other. And that's definitely an important thing to note is that, hey, in order to do that, you have to make sure that you understand where everything's working. So here it looks like, all right, so that error, if I click on tools, we still get this section error. This will be fixed though in a second. Um, something that's really good about Codex is it does know like how to patch itself. So usually, like for example, look at look at what it's doing right now, resolving duplicate closing tags and constants. So before it ends its work, it actually checks to see, okay, like is there any errors in this file? And that's something that Codex does really well. Um, and it's just, I really am feeling agentic with Codex rather than, you know, I know that cursor has the agentic functionality, uh, but cursor tabs is sometimes hard to navigate, whereas this is much more visible. I know I got an agent here running, I got an agent here running, I got an agent here running, and I can see all of them on one screen. Whereas in like a code editor with like cursor, for example, it's a little bit harder to manage everything out in the open at once. Um, harder to manage chats is just something that I've noticed. Um, so it looks like it did fix that, but the problem is that I'm not seeing the lights. So, you know, we'll see if it can get it on its own. We'll follow up. I'm sure that'll two shot it, but we'll take a look at it to see what goes on. Still getting that error in the dashboard. But yeah, guys, you can tell we've made a lot of progress and something that's helped us make all this progress is Codex. It's much better in my opinion. Um, so here our agent update is in. Only issue is God, it's still not great. Um, one thing, let's take this out here. I wanna remove this. Wait, hold up. So you can drop images in. I'm just gonna screenshot that and drop it in. And just say remove this. Just gonna remove that. Um, but you can see here, there's just weird overlays, um, which I'm not a fan of. All right, guys, so I just clipped the video because I wanted to stop it there. I didn't want the video to get too long. Uh, most of my longer videos are in my actual, my live streams. So I hope that you guys learned something just from this short workflow um, of me walking through some of the different Codex agents that we were working on. But I'm definitely, just to summarize, I'm definitely a big fan of Codex now. Um, I've been using it for the past several days and this new workflow that I have is much better than my old cursor workflow. So if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. Also make sure that you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, but we will be live again tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to continue our journey of vibe coding an app until I make a million dollars. But this video I just wanted to make to share my new Codex workflow with everyone. I'm pretty excited about it. So with that being said, I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow.